Hi, and welcome to the Boat Princess podcast. My name is Nikki Vo, and I'm your host. I am a boat owner, a marina's owner, an international conference presenter, and a huge advocate for boating. I'm sharing the stories from every nook of the boating industry with the intention of encouraging more women to join me and for more women to get behind the helm too. I want to share the experience and opportunities of boating, of the boating industry, and I want you to join me as I bring conversations and answer all the questions you've had. Boating is not just for the glamorous and rich and famous. It's full of beautiful and interesting people making the most of our natural environment and getting out there, enjoying the waterways. So let's set off the lines, take over the helm and escape to the world of boating. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Boat Princess podcast. I've got somebody in front of me who was actually recommended to talk to by another former podcast guest, Nona Peterson, um, known as a fantastic, uh, wonderful woman in our industry. Um, and she suggested I talk to Susie Chisholm. So Susie Chisholm, who is head of company communications and co-founder of Swiss Ocean Tech. Welcome to the Boat Princess podcast. Thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you. It's <laughs> lovely to be here. And Nona is a wonderful person. She is. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Nona, for this. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Swiss Ocean Tech, um, what do you do? Swiss Ocean Tech is a startup. So we're based in Switzerland. And what we do is we've come out with a new technology called Anchor Guardian. And Anchor Guardian monitors the anchor during the entire anchoring process. So as it's going down, as it's fixing in, and then overnight as well, or how does, how, what does it do? Yes, so during the entire anchoring procedure, when you're laying the anchor, when you're at anchor, when you're lifting the anchor, all during that time, you are getting a stream of information about the anchor. So force at anchor, roll angle of the anchor, if the anchor is dragging, how it's dragging, prediction of anchor hold. And yes, you can overnight. That's, of course, one of the times when the captains want very often to have this kind of technology available and this kind of information. So you have it on at night, but if you are at a place for longer, for days, then you can put the system to sleep so that you have longer battery time. Okay. So tell me how it does that is it does it come back to the helm to the technology there how, how does it tell the captain what it's doing yes so our main module it lives between the chain and the anchor and it communicates via ultrasound to a boat module which is basically a receiver it's a through hull mounted receiver and that communicates via a cable to a tablet and it provides the information to the captain and the crew of what they want to know at that particular point in time. It's all in real time with uh, sub-meter accuracy. Wow, impressive. So that tablet is something you provide as part of the equipment as well or? Yes. As, yeah. So we can provide it, but we don't have to. If they say we'd like to integrate it into a system we have, then that's something that we can look into, yes. Amazing. And then, of course, there's the app which is something that the captains also really like. They, when they're down in their cabin, then they can say, okay, the captains are always interesting. They'll sometimes have that sixth sense and they've got the intuition and they'll say, mm, something, my boat, it's moving differently. There's a wind, I'm not sure. What is my anchor doing? And this way they can just quickly take their phone, check the app, and they can see, is my anchor good? At least I know then what that is doing. Amazing. Does it set, set off an alarm if you're dragging? And It certainly does. Okay. It sets off an alarm and the captains can set the alarms for what is important to them. Maybe they say, okay, distance is important to me, 10 meters, 50 meters, 100 meters. Maybe they say I'm focusing on speed. So if the anchor is starting to drag, if it hits a certain speed, I want to know. 
Maybe they're interested in the force at anchor that they say, okay, up to, I don't know, 800 kilos or something, then I want an alarm. Yes, that's how it works. Wow, it's really adaptable to their particular needs, isn't it? It's a very sophisticated system. It's based on quite a few years of development with a lot of smart engineers, passionate engineers. And yeah, and and here we are, and we are actually launching this solution out of the market, which is really exciting for for us and for the team and and it's just seeing the baby grow the baby is leaving the house (laughs) yes so Met's Trade is actually your launch for this it is how exciting yes yeah thank you so where on earth did this idea come from so the founder of Swiss Ocean Tech is Thomas Fritzlin and he is a sailor he comes from Sweden and he grew up basically on a boat, always sailing. He's an instructor. And he always wondered, why is there not a solution providing information around the anchor? And this is something that just followed him through um, for many, many years. He's also an engineer. And so he just didn't let that ball drop. And then he found like-minded people, like-minded engineers who came with their specialties. They are all experts in their field. And then together they worked on this solution. At the beginning, in their, it was voluntary, so it was free time. And they'd come together and they'd do testing. And then it just kept evolving. And then finally in 2020, we had our first financing round. And all these engineers said, okay, let's, let's just become co-founders and start really making a business out of this. And so we are six co-founders in total. Okay. And you're a co-founder too. I am. How did you come into it specifically? So the, the founder is my husband. Okay. So, but it's one of those things that I prefer to keep in the background. Um, there's always that sort of stigma, ah, she's the wife. Oh, absolutely. We discussed that yesterday at the panel. We did. Yeah. And I, I just didn't want to be the wife. Yeah. But I've also been fascinated by this project and I have a communications background I'm from the corporate world I I worked always on communications um, running running PR marketing communications for 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 big companies at some point in time I said I really don't want to work for the corporate world anymore I'd like to bring my know-how to somewhere where I feel I'm leaving a benefit or making a benefit I don't know I guess you get to a certain age when you're like I'd like to do something and 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 give back a little bit so I I left the corporate world and then I went into corporate social entrepreneurship and all along I'm helping Thomas and the team and we're building up the messaging and we're building up the communication and then of course that time came along where the company formed and the question was, well, either you do it, Susie, or we need to find somebody else. And I was just so intrigued. And I just, I love the system and I love what it does. And I love the sustainability aspect of it. And I said, okay, I'm just going to go in with the team and, and start on this journey. And that's why I'm here. Brilliant. Because engineers are incredible at what they do, but they're not necessarily, they have a different brain type don't they so their their communication skills are not necessarily brilliant so they need somebody like you to come in and go okay this is how we're going to translate this incredible product to a consumer's way of looking at it as opposed to your brilliant brains looking at it and explaining it in detail uh, what we need is somebody that can say this is how gonna, it's going to benefit you as a client, right? Oh, the engineers, they're, they're <laughs> interesting. I tell you, I don't know how many times I've been at the table with our engineers. So we're, there's eight engineers and there's me. And then we have a finance man who is a part of our team. And I will suggest something, you know, me and I'm just like, okay, guys, this is exciting. This is what we, you know, we plan on doing. And (laughs) and I'll say, what's your feedback? What do you guys think? Because I want to hear it from you. Silence. Resounding (laughs) silence. And I'll be like, okay, did I? And then, I, you know, in my mind, I'm like, okay, did I say something that maybe wasn't understood? Or should I formulate this difference? And then... 
and I'll be like, guys, I mean, do you like it? Like, and they'll be, yes. <laughs> and then it'll be like, yes or no, that's isn't it? it? That's it. And, and I'm like, okay. And then I'll go back, you know, I'll go back to Thomas and I'm going, and I'll ask him and I'll say, so w- was it clear? Because I, I'm just not getting any feedback. And he's like, oh no, it was fine. It was clear. And they gave you a yes, Susie. So yes, it's fine. <laughs> and I'm learning now to communicate with him. And so sometimes I'll say to them, okay, guys, I really need to hear from you. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit about what you're thinking? And, and they are, and they're making an effort. And I see that it's sometimes it's challenging for them, but they, they make an effort and they will actually then write me an email and they'll say, Susie, I thought about it. And these are my thoughts. And they sit down and they take time. It's a different way of doing things. So Nikki, probably when you and I would be discussing something, we'll discuss it, you know, I'll throw an idea on the table and we'll say what we, what we think and we move on. But the engineers, they think about it, they mull over it, and then they'll sit down, they'll formulate an email and they'll provide me with that feedback that way. It's, it's, it's a longer process. Yeah, it's more analysis, isn't it? Very much, yeah. very much. Yeah, and I mean, this is the wonderful world that we live in. We need brains like that we to do. create products like this. We do. And then we need communicators like you to get that product out to market. Yes. So it's, um, that's, I think that's uh, one of the things that we're talking about with, um, with bringing women in it, into our industry because we're just humans. We just happen to be female, but we bring a different uh, viewpoint, a different way of doing things into into the the marketplace. So, um, and it's I think that's the diversity of what we need to bring into the boating industry culturally as well. We need to bring different cultures in as well because um, every culture, every gender looks at things completely differently. Just like an engineer and a communicator looks at it differently. We do. Yeah. So. Talking on that, on your LinkedIn profile, you refer to yourself as a people enthusiast. Ah. Now tell me what you mean by that. I like people. I, I like engaging with people. And, and sometimes, you know, my, my family, they, they make fun of me. So I'll say, oh, I'm just running over to the neighbor. I'll be back in two minutes. And they'll be like, okay, she'll be back in an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> because I go there and then I, I start talking to people and then, you know, how are you? And then the conversation just carries on. And I like hearing about people. I like to hear about what they're doing. Um, and I like to take that time because I think it's important. We're running around. We all have lots to do. But sometimes it's just nice to sit down and hear what people are doing and and how they're living their lives. And so, yes, people... They, I get enthusiastic when you, f- when you meet good people with good energy. I like to live in that orbit for a short amount of time. And, and so um, they, they energize me. If I meet energetic people, it sort of, it all, what goes around comes around. And I feed off of that as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same. Um, coming to Mets Trade, for example, and seeing... Uh, some amazing friends within industry and people that we know and love already, but then meeting new ones Mm. and building relationships with them or perhaps making a stronger relationship with somebody you already knew. Um, I think these events like Met's Trade are so important and I, I don't know about you, but during COVID when we didn't have our boat shows, we didn't have our trade shows, I found that really hard because, um, it does energize you. It does remind you of why you're doing this because the boating industry in particular I think has a wonderful level of connection through it Mm. and a wonderful level of um, collaboration and helping each other and being there for each other Um, because although we've got all different products I guess that's it we've all got really different products so we're not necessarily competing against each other we're working on you know, one boat needs a whole bunch of suppliers to, to fill it with all the things that it needs. So, so. 
yeah. So it's I think it's a great industry like that. And yeah, I'm like you. I I um as you've just said, I love the whole listening to somebody's story. I know my story. I've heard it a million times. I don't want to hear my story. I want to hear somebody else's story, which is why I love doing this podcast so much. I can imagine you meet lots of interesting people. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. And at the end of the day, what we're doing, it's for people. Exactly. So at the end of the day, it's yeah. people who are using it. And if you don't listen to them, you won't hear what do they need, what excites them, what what are they looking for. And it's always interesting when you talk to people and you think, okay, we know this story. And then all of a sudden you realize, ah, there's actually an element to the story that I did not know. And this person is introducing me to something else. And you just, you grow. And I think your whole solution gets better by doing that and hearing about that. And yeah, a place like Mets, it's, it's what it's all about. It's about networking. It's about meeting up with people. The world is global. Yep. You don't see each other very often, but that just seeing someone. Yeah. Having a cup of coffee with someone and just catching up, it, uh, it, it, I think it's in any industry, it's yeah. the same. And, and with your, a product like yours, you're going to get real feedback directly from your captains and your boat owners and they're going to be saying, well, actually we want it to do this. And so it will be a, a process of continuous ad adaptation, I'm guessing, for your product. It is. So we are coming to market uh, now. So METS is just our introduction. And the way we've set it up is you know, through the testing phase that we had, we realized that every captain, they anchor a little bit differently. And so for next year, we said, OK, we are producing 100 units and those 100 units should go to sort of pioneer thought leader type captains who want to collaborate with us. So we have Great. class certified anchor guardian solution, and we're looking for those captains who will provide us with their data and with their feedback because, yes, everyone's a little bit different, and we want to make sure we are addressing all those elements. Yeah. So what sort of size of yacht are we talking about for anchor guardian? So the technology itself is in essence, for any vessel with an anchor. So we're starting with super yachts, and then we move on to merchant ships, and then we move on to leisure boats. So uh, eventually it'll be a whole family of different sizes. Specifically now, we're starting with a 16 millimeter anchor chain because the anchor chain dictates our anchor module size. And then we move, we scale up or down, depending on what those 100 super yacht captains need. So we start with 16 millimeters, and then we go to maybe 17 and a half, 19 millimeters, maybe down to 14 millimeters, and then we take it from there. Cool. Okay. Now let's talk about you a little bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking Pressure's a bit more nervous on. now, guys. <laughs> Where did your childhood where was your childhood I am I come from Canada so I I'm was born in Canada and for the most part I I grew up in Canada my uh, my father worked for the Canadian embassy and so we also traveled we traveled a lot um, we lived in India for two years we lived in Pakistan and so it was an interesting childhood I got to see a lot I was exposed to a lot and then after finishing university in Canada, I was offered a job in Switzerland. And so I decided I'll give it a shot. And I bought a ticket, which was valid for six months. And I moved over to Switzerland. And that's where my home has been for the past 30 years. Wow. Okay. So do you think that moving around, adapting, finding new friends, different languages, different cultures. How do you think that contributed to you as a person? It, it contributed for sure. I'm an outgoing person in general, but I also think it opens me up to different cultures, which it did. Also, but the way I, I see things, the way I react to things, um, I try some when I'm in a situation where I think, I don't understand why someone is reacting the way they are reacting. I try and take a step back and say, okay, 
why, what could that be based on? Where, where does their behavior come from? And that's probably also part of this upbringing where sometimes we were in situations which were just so exotic to what we were accustomed to. And you just have to be understanding and open to, to what's around you. And yeah, that does form you as a person. Yeah, it's given you some really good skill sets, I should imagine, on a social basis of understanding people and like I, I don't say, know adapting. if you have to have traveled the way I have traveled to be open. I don't think you do. I mean, if you have a if you're open and you have that kind of personality, then that works too. It's just, yes, it did um it it for sure made me act a certain way when I when I just when I'm approaching people. Uh, coming from different cultures, uh, coming from different ways of life. Yeah, that's great. So Switzerland's quite a nice place to live, it I'm is. guessing. Good chocolate, <laughs> good cheese, good skiing. Yeah. Uh, I always say Switzerland is like a little postcard. It, it really is. It's just, it's beautiful. Um, and, and you drive along, you have the lakes, you have the mountains, you have the cows and their bells in the background, the churches. It's uh, very picturesque. And everything is really close by. I mean, I come from Canada, and so I'll be like, yeah, I'll just, you know, drive on down those two hours, and it's no big deal, and I'll come back in the evening. And, and for Swiss standards, two hours, it's... That's you, big. Well, you're halfway across the country. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for them, it's like, well, that's a distance. Yeah, yeah. And I get, I'm guessing, because it's so central and you've got so much of Europe around you, you do you travel a lot and enjoy we do. that? We do. We travel to Italy. We, I mean, everything is is so close. So for us, we'll, we'll take a drive up to, to Germany and spend the day in, 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 a, in a city or we go over to the Elsass and spend a weekend there. It's, it's, these aren't distances and mm. and they're just but so, so different. So you get all of a sudden different food and different experiences and and you're down at the water and then you're up in the mountains and if you like that kind of thing which we do then it's it's a great place to live yeah europe is pretty special like that isn't it? i think so yeah so you have family we have two children yes yeah. i mean they're not and children how old anymore are they now? well i have two um adult children so my daughter uh, she lives in London. Yeah. She's very independent. She's, she's doing her own thing. And, and our son still lives at home. He, uh, he goes to university and he works part time. So did you work the whole time you were raising your family? I did. Okay. And is there any particular, I guess, tips or tricks that you, uh, we all do the juggle. Yes. <laughs> we all do the juggle. <laughs> With all the ups and downs of the juggle. <laughs> but is there any particular thing that you recall doing that you feel allowed you to get through that? I would say I always came back to what's true to me. It's an interesting question because, you know, you have those moments where you, you yeah, you doubt yourself as a parent, you you. You're not around for a special event or, yeah, you miss something or your child says something. But on the other hand, I know that I was a better mother for me because I worked. I knew that if I were at home all the time, I wouldn't have always had the patience. I wouldn't always have been as in tune to my children when I was there. And maybe that sounds sort of counterintuitive but because those moments where I was gone, I was working. But the moments where I was at home, I was happy to be at home with my kids. Yeah. And so I always said, is this true to me? Is this, am I doing the thing that's right for me? And, and if I could answer that with yes, then I knew this is the right way. It, it's hard as a parent. You only really know I'm, I'm, do your kids... Are they well adjusted? Are they happy? Are they kind? Are they confident when they when they start out on their own journey? Well, you only know that when it's really, you know, 25, mm -hmm. 20 years down the road. So now my kids are doing their own thing and I can say they're well adjusted. They're happy. 
They, they're following what is, is good for them. So I think, okay, it couldn't have been too bad. Yeah. Well, they're still alive too. Pardon? <laughs> they're still alive they, too. They are. They are. <laughs> yes. Thank they didn't goodness. choke on something. or. <laughs> but they, they, they sometimes did choke on things, but we were able to solve it along the way. There are moments, I mean, every parent has their stories yeah. where you think, ooh, Sometimes you got lucky as well. That Absolutely, we've with, all been there. Well, Oof, yeah. that was close. That was close. Yeah, um, yeah, we have that too. Yeah, and you yeah. have your up days and your bad. You know, you have your good days and you have your bad days. That's also part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about. We've talked about how you founded this company and so on and so forth, but we haven't talked about your career prior to that. So you did uni. And once you'd graduated, what did you do then? I studied finance in, in Canada. That's what I graduated with. And I was uh, offered this job in the finance department at ABB, which is a big corporation in Switzerland. Yep. So I went, did that. The thing about finance is it just wasn't always my thing. And I knew that. Yep. Um, and so I thought, okay, I just, I stayed with it because I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go. And when I had my daughter, it was funny, I was watching a television program and they highlighted this woman who worked in communications and it was a program about people's careers. And I thought, I love what this woman is doing. And then funny enough, I had a job interview because I was looking for a job for when I was uh, had my children and it was for a finance job and I went to this and I, I, I will forever be grateful to this HR person because she interviewed me and she said you know I'm not so sure you're you're really the right person for this finance job she said is there something else you like to do and I said as a matter of fact if I'm really honest I really like communications she says, we happen to have a job opening for communications. Oh, Would wow. you like to apply for that? And there you go. I did. I got the job, although I really didn't have any background in that. But she I was Canadian. I was Canadian. I brought that English um, background, English speaking background for Switzerland. And we got along really well, my boss and I. We just hit it off, and he said, you know what, I think you can do this. Yeah. Uh, I trust you. And so I worked my way up. I just kept working my way up. So I went through from ABB, Hewlett-Packard, Agilent Technologies, ended up with Philips. And I had a great boss at Philips. And, and then I finally had the opportunity to do my master's degree, which I did. Did that um, alongside the family and, and, and working. And then when I graduated, my boss said, fine, now you run all of communications and PR for Switzerland for Philips. And there you go. I took that job and I stayed there for 18 years. That's a massive job. That was a great job. Yeah. I really liked that job. We had a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Philips is super diverse. At the time, we had three different um, focus areas. So it was consumer, it was lighting, it was health. So it was vast and, yeah. and it was interesting. And I was always there. I mean, sometimes I was faced with a, a, a task, a project, and I thought, I have no idea how to do this. But then you just have to say, okay, you learn and you listen to the people who do know things about that area. And it, it, it worked. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about continually learning and, and asking the questions, isn't it? Absolutely. Asking the questions, not being shy. That's not, not, that's not the time to be quiet and shy. I mean, you, you have a lot of people as well who are relying on you. And um, so I really look back very fondly on that time. Yeah, very cool. Empire Marina Bobbin Head, welcome to Sydney's boating paradise. With our idyllic location on Sydney's North Shore, just 35 minutes drive from the CBD, we are all about where it's best to go boating and keeping it as easy and enjoyable as possible for you. 
We have a full hard stand facility on site, 200 berths, a beautiful bistro and plenty of parking. If you'd like to know more about berthing your boat with Empire Marinas, call us on 02 9457 9011 or email geordie, J-O-R-D-Y at empiremarinas.com.au. We look forward to having you as part of the Empire family. So that's a real sliding doors moment for you there in that interview. Um, Why did you study finance in the first place, though? What what, what was the influence that made you study finance in the first place? Oh, dear, I'm really outing myself here because (laughs) finance was really, I didn't know what to do. I did not know what to do. And somebody said, you know what? The best degree you can do is go get finance. You're smart. You'll figure it out. And I thought, hmm. I don't know if I'm I'm so crazy about that, but I said, okay, I mean, I should have done marketing, right? But yep. I didn't. And so I did the finance degree. Okay. So it wasn't it wasn't a family member that said you have to do this. It was just no. just purely a um a, a, okay, this is a sensible thing to do until I work it out. Exactly. Type thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's not the best explanation, but that was truly the way it ended up. Yeah, yeah. And so you've gone for this amazing interview. You've given that, been given that position in communications. You're loving your time at Philips. Um, that's a really big company to work for. Um, is there any particular things that you really learned from a, a big corporation like that? Oh, I'm, I learned so many things. I mean, a company like Philips, it's a matrix so first you also report to different people. You, I always said the biggest challenge was managing expectations because in a position like that, lots of people have expectations, lots of people have demands, and you just cannot address them all. So you have to learn to say, when is the right time to say no? When is the right time to say, okay, I have to focus my energies there And you also have to learn who are the people who are the ones on my team, who are the ones I can rely on, who are the ones I need to have sort of in my corner. And it's not always necessarily the top, top people. They can be anywhere. And you you have to manage that. I mean, Philips taught me to focus taught me to express as well what I need, where I'm going, but also to, to talk to people, to learn from them. Um, ah, I could go on and on. I mean, also Great just fun. aspects of the job because it was so intricate. So mm-hmm. the, the, the spectrum of communications that that Phillips job provided, it was sponsorship, it was... Um, the financing, the budgeting of it, it was the creativity of it, it was working with agencies, it was working with messaging, it was working with content um, creation, it was working with which channels do you choose, it, event organization. It was just a lot. Mm. And and I liked that. I, I liked that building the bridges as well. Where do you build the bridges where does it make sense? How do you make the most of what you have? That's great. Yes, yeah, so it was obviously a very diverse role for you. Yes. Yeah, which keeps an intelligent woman like you interested and that's why you stayed for 18 years. I did, but it was also a great team. It was, I really have to say, because like we said before, people, if you have good people, fun people, people where you all grow together. It was a great management team. We had a great CEO. Uh, He supported us a lot. He listened a lot. He helped you out. But he also was there and he said, you know, maybe this wasn't so cool what you did. Yeah. I expect you to do better. And when he said that, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, pull up your socks. Yeah. And, And learn from that, which which I hope I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Um, so 
you guys got a special mention in the Dame Awards here at Met's Ooh. Trade, didn't you? <laughs> yes. That's very exciting. It is. Yeah. So has that made a difference to your, I don't know, has it given you real enthusiasm? Has it has it given you a bit more drive? How, how has that affected you, that special mention in the awards? A special mention is always special. I mean, just just, I should say, recognition. So part of... Us, we're a small team, we're a small company. So we are putting out a technology which is not existing. We're creating a new market. So not only do we introduce a different technology, um, we introduce a different name. Anchor Guardian is just not known. So part of the communications is getting the spotlight on Anchor Guardian. So part of it is I apply for the awards, as many awards as I can, where it makes sense. Yep. Because I know it's recognition for the team. These guys are working hard. They're working nights. They're working weekends. Um, they put a lot of love and heart and sweat into, into what we're doing to, to make it what it is. And on the other hand, I want that recognition because you can only do so much with a startup's budget. And so if I have these other companies broadcasting our names, that's good for us. So, yes, I do apply for awards. And sometimes you get really lucky. So this, I mean, this um, fall has been incredibly wonderful to us. We, we won the Ocean Exchange Port Award, which is a huge deal in in. Um, for us, it came with came with prize money as well, which which was wonderful. And that always then, helps. Pardon? That always helps. That always <laughs> helps. And then on top of that, here these Dame Awards, for us, we're not so familiar with Mets, but everyone was like Dame Awards. Yes, that's they're what big. you got to go for. Yeah, they're big. They're big, mm -hmm. and so we put a lot of effort in making sure that the unit didn't get stuck in customs, that the application was in on time, it was what they needed, and these applications can be tedious. Mm. They take a lot of time and a lot of effort, but that's okay. I have no problems doing that. And you win some, you lose some, but there are some you'd like to win. And so super happy when when they said special mention. I mean, you want to win, yeah. but I'm I'm happy with happy the special. With the spe well, you still get up on the screen. You're you still, get up on you know, the that, that breakfast briefing, there are, there are an awful lot of, you know, I was there, there's, there's a lot of people there that are suddenly exposed to your brand just by seeing it on the screen and understanding what you've created um, that may not have been if you hadn't entered those those awards. That's so That's exactly right. I think that's that's a really important part of it. Um, I also think awards are fantastic for um, certainly the Marine Award, Awards we've entered and all that sort of thing and thankfully won every time. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but we, um, we find it's a great way of auditing what you're doing as well because you're asked a whole bunch of questions and and when you do it you think, oh, yeah, we could actually do that a little bit better. So I think awards are not only good for giving you exposure when you win or when you get given a special mention, but I think they're a great way of making you sit down and and work on something in particular that you suddenly use as a bit of an audit as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I would uh, subscribe to that 100%. I mean, these applications... So they'll ask you a complicated question and you have 250 characters to answer and you're like, okay, I've got a thousand characters written down. And then you keep tweaking it and refining it. And then at the end you realize that 250 character answer, that's bang on. That's really good. But it took you a while to get there. And, and it does, it makes you work on... What exactly do we want to say? Yeah. To whom? I find that hugely beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we won the uh, Under 20 Boats Hard Stand MIA Award this year. And um, it's also really good for the team. Absolutely. Because they work very, very hard. And whilst as a as leaders of that team, we recognise them for that and, and all that sort of thing, winning an award and, and their peers, seeing them and they seeing their peers at an award ceremony 
seeing them getting up on the stage is uh, it's it's really really exciting for them and um, it, it's such a motivator, isn't it, it is. to the to the team? Have you found the team are really enthused and and sort of They've, pumped about the fact that they got the special mention? It's an it's. It's the engineers, so you know. Okay, fair enough. You know, so I have to say that I love you guys, but you know, you'll say, "Hey, guys, we won," and they're like, "Great!" <laughs> and but you know, they're proud. Yes, they're proud, yeah. and and they, they should be. It's such an accomplishment, and and we get go home and we, and we bring these trophies with us and we say come on we you know open up a bottle it's not always easy because we're spread out so as soon as we get together we take that time it's important to celebrate and just say job well done yeah really guys and and then we you know we have a nice meal together and and um and celebrate yeah you got you gotta celebrate the wins yes that's very good advice yeah very good advice Okay, so you've come from Philips and you've come into the boating industry for the first time. Yes. How do you find this industry differs to the electronics space? Is there anything particular that's really stood out to you that, oh, wow, that's different or perhaps the cultural difference or perhaps the way people interact together or what, have you noticed anything specifically different in the boating industry? So what we do is we talk very heavily with captains and captains are an interesting bunch. I'm, <laughs> I, I say that with the utmost admiration. Well, absolutely. They've got a hard job. They have a hard job. Yeah. Specifically to your questions though, though what I realize is that these guys – and for the most part, it is guys, I will say, um, their love of nature, their love of being out in the open water, being out in the fresh air. And when I'll ask the captains, what's your favorite part of boating? And and they'll say, if they're on a sailboat, they'll say, ah, oh, it's that moment where you turn off the motor and it's quiet. Or it's that moment when we're in a quiet marina somewhere and you see the lights in the heaven that is something that you don't get that I mean I didn't get that but it's the nature of the industry but if you're in like a consumer products industry and you're talking to people they have their own things at excitement so they'll maybe talk about the sound of a, a sound system and and get excited about those kinds of things but for me because I enjoy being outside I enjoy being with the people who also enjoy that. Yeah. And this industry does put you outside. So it gets me out of the office. And I, I mean, what a beautiful experience to be able to come to these shows, to be able to go to the shipyards, to be able to speak with the people. You're at the water. Sometimes we're in a, in a wonderful opportunity where can just hop in in the ocean, take a dip. That's something about the industry that you can really combine sometimes your private passions with work. I'm not sure if that's exactly what you were looking for no, as an no, answer. No, that's but a good answer because um, we always say that uh, they don't put boats in ugly places. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we get to see some amazing places in, in the world. Yes. You know, I mean... Uh, myself and my husband traveling with Icomia because my husband is the president of Icomia. Um, we get to Congress and, and the conferences and so on. They're always in some way you wouldn't necessarily pick as a destination for a holiday. No. But you end up in that location to attend that conference or that trade show or that Congress. And every time it's like it's you sort of look around and go, okay, this is another tough week at the office yes. because it's beautiful and uh, you're surrounded by incredible yachts and um, amazing locations um, and just that water, 
you know, we get to see the water so often and be on the water so often. It's such a privilege of, of working in this industry, I find. Very much so. I say that very often that it's just a privilege to be doing what we do um, because I love being on the water and just having, it's a day in the office where you are out at the water, you're breathing in that fresh air. Um, even if it rains, it's still sometimes it's a it's a beautiful, warm atmosphere, depending on where you are. Yep. But I I very much um, enjoy that and and cherish those moments. I'm like, yeah, here I am. It's a Monday afternoon, and I get to do this. I get to be on the beach because this is where the captain said, look, come to this particular area that's that's fun it's like it's it's an adventure yeah absolutely we discover so much more of the world that we didn't know was there yeah yeah exactly so good so as you know a focus of the boat princess podcast is to try and get more women into our industry is there any particular um i guess strategy that you think the industry could do to do that is there or is there a particular change in language you'd like to see? Or is there um, something that you, just a, a tiny change that we think we could make um, in this industry or generally in, in boating to make women feel more welcome? I think the things, that you, you as an example, are one of those things that one can do speaking to other women, having mentorships, having people, women not being shy about what they're doing and being on the radar. For instance, one of the women who makes a lot of headlines I know is Kelly Gordon. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's wonderful. Brilliant. And she yeah. just speaks clearly down to earth, doesn't beat around the bush, but she she's very open and says, I'll be a mentor and let other people be a mentor. And I think that's important that women see there are other women doing these jobs. So don't be shy if you have a job and there's an opportunity to talk about it as a woman. Do that because other women, I think, are looking for other women. I was speaking to a, a, a woman captain and I said, you're you're a, a lone ranger ranger out yeah. there. She <laughs> says, "Yeah, I don't know too many other 2%, women." Two percent, apparently. That's right. Yeah. And I put her in touch with. I said, "Look, Kelly Gordon is one you can reach out to." Um, there was another organization, She of the Sea, which uh, was in existence. I don't know if it's still in existence, but they also Jenny Matthews. She provided uh, mentorships. I think you just make make those things known, talk about them. And, and you having this podcast is one of those opportunities. Talk about those, those opportunities that are out there. Make it known. Make those connections. Um, and also the organizations. There are organizations out there. And it's not all about just pushing, but women as well have to take an interest. So the young women who are coming out, be interested. I mean, it's just a, a Google search away. So spend an evening, find out what is available around me. What kind of organizations are available? Marine industry and, and, and find out for Instagram, whatever channels you're on. There are organizations out there. Find out what's around you and tap into those However, become a member or visit well, an event that they have. I, I think it's important to get out there and we're stronger together. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think what's a few things have happened here at Mets Trade that I've really loved. Um, one was the Rising Star last night at the Bil Boat Building Awards uh, was a beautiful young woman from Australia. Oh, um, Josie Mayer, she works with um, Eden Craft Boats and uh, I ha cannot tell you how proud I was to see her. 
get up on stage and receive that award because that that's really really exciting to see that. Um, and then we've had uh, an amazing panel of women were presenting yesterday with uh, the incredible Michelle Goldsmith yes. of um, Soundings um, Trade Only, and I know she has a mentoring program um, that she puts women through. Um, through her connections um, and that that panel yesterday uh, was an entire panel of, of women in leadership in our industry which shows to the especially the younger women in the audience that there is a pathway for them to achieve a high level within our industry and that there are women there mm-hmm. so there's to me when there are women there and they can see them then that takes away things like the story of the glass ceiling and all that sort of stuff because they can say well no they've done it so clearly I can do that too um and I the more we all do this the more we are the women that other women see that they can be? Um, I think there's a real a real chance of of us, um, you know, expanding our presence in this industry, which we are doing already. There's a massive difference um, Mets this year to Mets ten years ago. Massive difference of the number of women here. So um, I think that's really, really good and it's really exciting to grow it all. But, yeah, there are people like Michelle Goldsmith that do the the leading like they do and creating situations like that and having their mentoring programs and talking about women in their publications and so on and so forth. That's right. It's really important. It is important. And I encourage young people, reach out to these people. They would be happy to hear from you. You can reach out on LinkedIn. You can reach out through the organization. If you are someone young and you say, oh, would it be possible to sit down with you? And um, if you have certain questions, what is the worst the person can say? They can say no, or they can say not right now, but maybe later. But I I would doubt that they would do that. So it is a thing. Reach out. uh, Take part in these opportunities. Another one I want to mention is um, Yachting Ventures. It's a young organization run by two young ladies who are helping startups. Yeah, Gabby. They also, Gabby, they yeah. had a, a, also a talk of young female founders yesterday from startups. It's again, like you say, it's providing that platform. It's getting those names out there. They're there. You just have to, um, it's it's sort of a, it works both ways. You have to put the information out there. Correct. And the others, you you have to You have to take looking. the opportunity. You have yeah. to, yes, grab those yeah. opportunities. Yeah. There's that wonderful, I don't know that um, success is when chance meets opportunity or something. Yes. And so, yeah, you you have to as well make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I heard, I heard, we were, I watched the sailing webinar a little while ago and I forget who said it she was a wonderful incredible sailor and she said her dad always said to her opportunity knocks lightly yeah and so you've got to be looking for it yes and you've got to be eyes open ears open oh hang on I could do that and then you've got to have the courage to say can I do that don't be shy yeah yeah Yeah. I mean some of us I mean one of the ladies on the panel yesterday she said wow if I could look back and talk to my younger self I'd say don't be shy yeah there's no reason to be shy what's the worst that can happen you know I mean nothing so people might say oh not interested in what you have to say but even then no harm done well you learn something from that because you you do you learn from that rejection Okay, what did I do that I could have done better for them to react Precisely. differently? So, so yeah, it's all learning. It's all learning. It is. It's yeah. all learning and it's just having a little bit of faith and you, you don't have to take big steps. You be small steps. So if you don't like outing yourself in a big auditorium, then reach out to someone separately, as I mentioned. That's an easy way to go about it or just participate as a member in one of these events. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Susie, for being on our podcast. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Nikki, for having me. I mean, it's it's um, it's very nice as well that you wanted to spend your time with me, and I'm very <laughs> flattered. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. No, it's fantastic. I think it's a great product. It's a it's a safety product which we all love, 
Um, so I think it's going to be, I, and I certainly hope it's going to be a massive success for you. Thank you very much. So if people want to find out about your product, where should they go? Anchorguardian.com. It's the easiest place to go. We have an Instagram. We are on LinkedIn. Anchor Guardian by Swiss Ocean Tech. Um, yes. And otherwise you can always reach out to me, Susie Chisholm. Fantastic. Yes. So Susie's, uh, Susie is spelled S-U-Z-Y. S-U-Z-Y. Yeah. Yes. And then Chisholm, C-H-I-S-H-O-L-M of Swiss Ocean Tech. So when you look her up on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for being here, Susie. Thank you very much, Nikki. We'll see you on the water soon. I'd love to hear what you think of this episode of the Boat Princess podcast. And by subscribing, you'll never miss one again. You can advertise your business right here on the Boat Princess podcast. We have a worldwide audience of around 31,000 listeners a month of boaters and those in the boating industry. Contact us at The Boat Princess. We'd love to hear from you.